Hi there, good people. Good morning from Dhaka, Bangladesh. It's now 4 a.m. here. Very peaceful and quiet morning. Uh, I'm going to do a top 20 list once again. Uh, 20 is becoming my number. I just think I should <laughs> cut it down to uh, sort of 10 or 15. It will be making my life easier. But yeah, this is a requested video. So I want to put up 20 of my fragrances uh, today plus few more. I just want to show you a few fragrances that I purchased once. Then I sold them off or I got rid of them. But I really felt like uh, I wanted to get them back in my collection. And this is kind of an interesting idea. And this idea came from one of my brothers, Brother Ali Raza. Uh, I think he's from Pakistan. I could be wrong, but he requested me to do this in my group. So Brother Ali, here we go. So a couple of honorable mentions. And how this is going to go is that I have a few more fragrances that I sold and I bought it again. Different reasons I got them back, okay? It could be... Uh, you know, as I go, I will explain to you. I don't want to make it super long. So honorable mention number one is going to be Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Pour Homme. Okay, this perfume I absolutely hated before. Absolutely hated. I do love the flankers. I have one flanker from this line in the main list. But this perfume, what uh, I did not like it is the pepper. It's super peppery. But, you know, it gives me headache. Sometimes I get sick, you know, you get like a headache. And it's just overbearing. But summertime, you know, like more and more years went by. I wanted to get it back in my collection because of the lemon, citrus, that orange, a little bit of incense. This stuff like the very strong peppery woody cake. And I kind of, I'm okay with it. I do not absolutely love it, but I feel like I have to have it sometimes. I have a small 40 ml, but it's good enough for me. Uh, this fragrance is good for summer, very long lasting. Just wanted to have the bottle. I like these bottles a lot. And second honorable mention I'm going to go with is a small little like 10, 15 ml, whatever left in this bottle. I had this long back. Um, I feel this fragrance is very nice it does not uh, wow me but it's a good fragrance nonetheless because this is like a small bottle i'm showing it as an honorable mention this is gucci purong too i have about what 10 mil or 15 mil in here and this fragrance basically the whole uh, the packaging is all messed up i bought it from one brother the things they they're because they're old you know this look look the cap everything comes off but uh, this bottle used to be very nice heavy heavy bottle and these are good times of gucci so this is basically a tea and violet leaves based perfume with little bit of hint of smoke somewhere i guess it's a very soothing and uh, relaxing perfume uh, will i look for a backup bottle yeah perhaps if i find a small 50 ml or again 100 ml i would buy it but it's a nice fragrance from ba like back in the past like from the past okay it's a relaxing fragrance okay so now i'm going to show you 20 fragrances plus few more and these are not in any orders okay these fragrances all of them i feel like at some point i need them back in my life uh, very quickly, uh, these fragrances, all of them are reviewed in my channel. Just type the name, check out the list from the description and just see for my full review. Okay, then you'll see uh, if I liked it or didn't like it. S some reason, okay. So first fragrance I'm going to show you since this is not in any order. So it's not like from worst to best. All of them are back in my collection because I missed them. First fragrance is this one, Grave Vetiver by Tom Ford. This is the EDP. I used to own this bottle. Then I sold it off. The reason being, I did not enjoy it at first. You know, like some three, four years back, uh, that time, like vetiver was not my favorite note. And I felt like this fragrance was not really reaching for it. It's not very sweet or not, not very citrusy. Vetiver has this distinctive smell. It's a grassy smell. So recent times, like last one year or two years, I'm appreciating vetiver a lot more. You saw me in my channel. And I can tell you one thing, vetiver is growing on me rapidly. So this is one of my best <clears throat> high class uh, vetiver fragrance, Tom Ford, grey vetiver. So I bought it back in my collection. Second is another vetiver, and this is just a coincidence. I did not mean to put them side by side. This is Terre d'Hermes, all intense vetiver. I bought this perfume when it came out first, okay? And then I really feel the reason to sell this for me does that I have a page, you know? Uh, Goodfellas Fragrance of Bangladesh is my Deccan page for Bangladesh, okay? So sometimes I buy perfumes, I review, sometimes I use them a lot. Same thing happened with this one. I was actually hoping this fragrance would sell like in the decan page, but it did not sell that much. And I was not reaching for it. So I'm like, I like the original Tear Dermes. I like the old Thrift Fresh. I like the perfume. This is like uh, perhaps not really my cup of tea. I sold it off. But uh, maybe like last year or so, 2020 or 19, I felt like, you know, I'm liking Vetiver a lot. Let's give this one more try. And I absolutely loved it. This is very long lasting. It's a little bit different because it's orange lemon citrusy thing going on with the vetiver very long lasting premium quality perfume this is the most uh, potent of the whole line okay so second one is tear dermis all intense vetiver 
Number three is a three-way tie. Okay, I have three fragrances to show you from the same line. I don't want to show you like separately. Just simply, Guerlain Low Medial. Okay, that's the first one, the EDT. Then the second one would be EDP. And the third one recently I got is this cute little, the cologne. You guys know how much I love this. Uh, these three perfumes, I just want to tell you why I sold them. I had this whole line. I had these lines and then I had, uh, I think, full 100 ml bottles. So basically what happened was I liked them, but I did not really understand the, because they have their similarity in the whole line of the sweetness of the nuttiness of the almond. Some of them have leather, some of them have cherry, some of them have fresh lime. But I felt like they are not really something that blow me away, like compared to Durham Intense or uh, like for example the white one I sold off because it was not a beast mode performer but I appreciate the fragrances for their composition a lot more than the performance this is what happens with you when you slowly you know go deep into the game uh, performance is not your first category but these two the EDP and EDT really last a long time this is leather heavy this is cherry heavy and the middle one is citrus heavy all three are back in my collection because I love it if I find 100 ml of these getting super rare I'll buy it, okay? So, Guerlain, Low Medial, uh, EDT, EDP, and Cologne, okay? So, yeah. Next, I'm going to show you a fragrance perhaps no one will uh, remember from this generation or recall. This is a fragrance that had huge love. Back in the time, uh, Ralph Lauren, this is one of their biggest fragrance. This bottle exudes glass. It's, it's a, I think, leather, sandalwood sort of combo. And it has this nice little bright orange uh, and it's got the spices. This is Safari by Ralph Lauren. Many people will remember this kind of a uh, cap and this bottle. Some people describe this as a five-star uh, luxury hotel. If you had a whiskey bottle there, this is what it looked like. I uh, wear this in winter. This is not the Cosmere version, by the way. This is not a vintage, but I had it. I sold it and I kind of missed it. It's like my uh, kind of like old school sentimental kind of fragrance. Uh, I like to sniff it once in a while. I use it like perhaps once in two months or so, but this is very, very masculine still, okay? And I really love that fragrance. Uh, this one and Polo Green, perhaps I should get it back, but this is a Manly Man fragrance, 40 years plus, and they would appreciate it. And I'm 40. <laughs> Guess what? Rap Lauren Safari. I'll write down the names for you. Next fragrance I'm going to show you is Hugo Boss Bottled Intense EDP. I had this fragrance. I had the EDT. I bought that, I sold off the EDT and this one both at the same time. And I felt like, you know, Hugo Boss bottle is not reaching for it that much. It became like a very old sort of DNA. I have a lot of other flankers from this line, infinite, you know, like the other ones. But what happened with this one day, I started craving for it in the winter time. And I really started missing. I bought both the EDT and EDP. Uh, my EDT is with my dad now, I gave it to him. But intense EDP, that richness of that apple, cinnamon, just sweet and lovely. Sometimes you don't need like groundbreaking fragrance. This is my nostalgic fragrance. It reminds me of my Malaysian days when I was there uh, going from mall to mall. Uh, like, you know, you just go through like Parkson or uh, uh, Icy Tan or something or Sogo. You will smell this DNA everywhere. This is a classic. You always should have this in your collection just for the remembrance. And the Intensity P is the performer. Remember that. Hugo Boss bottle, Intensity P. It's back in my rotation. Next. I was talking about Dolce & Gabbana, right? That uh, the fragrance I cannot really pull off because it's too much pepper, but they have some other uh, flankers. They really are better. The Intense EDP, uh, I have that, but the fragrance that I sold off, I felt like not much about it. I did not feel this was in my rotation that much and I not was using it. So I sold it off, but I got it back. This is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Sun. And this is the male version. There's a female version as well. First reason to get it back is that this is limited time release. You cannot find it absolutely everywhere. Okay, this is a bit rare to find. Second thing is this fragrance has this nice sort of coconutty, sort of like a tropical suntan lotion vibe, which I really enjoy on the top of that original uh, light blue. And this fragrance reminds me of summer, you know, like islands, you know, with my friends, university days. So this is back in my rotation too. Light blue, sun by Dolce & Gabbana. Next fragrance, inexpensive perfume. I had it, sold it, and I feel like this fragrance was something I did not understand before. But every time winter comes, you know, this perfume I start missing. And I know that this is Johnny Depp's signature scent. You guys know what I'm talking about. Zeno Davidoff. This was one of the first perfumes that I bought in Bangladesh. Okay, this is still very affordable. Discontinued, but you can have it. Okay, still available at very good price under $30, $25. 
So good thing about Zeno is that this fragrance is very similar to if you like Barbershop, if you like Tom Ford Boudi Jour, the dry down is very similar to that, but Tom Ford obviously it's a lot more sophisticated. But this one you get the additional leather, uh, chocolate, something like a coffee, kind of dark patchouli. But it really reminds me of a barrel of a gun. You know, it's like a Western movie, rough and tough, you know, like uh, uh, robbers, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like movies, you know, like, uh, what's that movie? Uh, they are like a couple and then they rob banks together, Bonnie and Clyde, you know. This fragrance is a Bonnie and Clyde for me, okay. Zeno Davidoff is a dark, uh, like a very feel-good fragrance, you know, like Friday, you know, casual weekend. Definitely is a masculine fragrance, it's a powerhouse, definitely try it. Uh, Zeno Davidoff, I'm very happy to have it back. Next one is a fragrance perhaps not many people would care about, but I really like uh, it from this line, you know, like this Azaro chrome line has a lot of gems. This is one fragrance, it's like flew under the radar, okay. I had it, I sold it off, I'm not really fond of it back then, but I did buy a 200ml massive bottle. This is Azaro chrome united. The reason for me to buy this is the violet leaves mixes with the tea, black sweet tea and musk. Very uh, comforting scent very long lasting one thing and the thing is this doesn't smell like many sweet or citrusy perfume it has its own distinctive thing going so i really like wearing this in the weekend time but it's it's like sort of like a summer day if, if you're sitting at home sipping a cup of tea and something like gucci purum too i feel that one is super expensive now you can easily replace that with this one chrome united uh really really nice perfume and it's very sophisticated and you know affordable so no point and not getting it look at that bottle base is very nice too okay i like the juice color too many reasons to get it back next one more azaro i don't know how they are coming like one after another like house after house this azaro purum i think onyx or silver black the name is silver black or onyx both names same perfume these are the fragrances that got discontinued night time this one and i think there was a few more i guess i forgot their names uh silver black anyway so Azaro had these perfumes, line of perfumes. They're super nice, super nice. I had them in 2016, 17. And there was a time I wanted to buy some other perfumes. In a rush, I sold off like one whole line of Azaros, okay? This was one of them. But if you look for these fragrances, you know, they do not like have this everywhere. But if you see it, give it a try. I'm just telling you, this smells so nice. This has this beautiful, beautiful apple. Got this lavender thing going. It's sweet. It got ambroxan. It's very long lasting. It got gets complimented and it's perhaps I call this like a old days Savoir. Before Savoche came out, perhaps this fragrance would cut it for you, but this has a sweetness and super long lasting performance. It's just made me nostalgic. I had to get it one day because I love it a lot. Okay, Azaro, uh, Silver Black. Next perfume, I had the whole line. I sold off one, then I sold off other one. The, it's called uh, Davidoff Blend Line. I still have the black one, that is the Eger Blend. I had the Leather Blend. And I still have Amber Blend. This one I sold off because I did not like Amber so much. I had uh, Bentley for many Intense, you know, I have Leather Blend. I feel like this is kind of like redundant. But you know, the whole blend line is beautiful. The Wood Blend is a little bit like not must have. It's woody spicy, but this is a genuine masterpiece. If you like Amber, these are getting very hard to find. I saw it one day. I just immediately, I think, bought it from one of the group members. Almost full, okay? This is niche quality stuff, okay? You have to have it in your collection. Weather, like breezy weather, you know, like uh, it's gonna rain, okay? This time it's very bit chilling. Be more performer too, okay? So if you do love some niche kind of style, amber st fragrances, this is very nice one, okay? Amber blend. So first 10 are gone, I think. <clears throat> Let me show you some more. Next one, Lalix Ombre Noir. I had this perfume, I had Another one, uh, I don't remember what that fragrance was. Um, I sold it off. I think it was, uh, can't remember at this point. It was maybe a Bentley or some other perfume similar to this, okay? Um, what is that fragrance? Uh, I saw it that day in the shop. Anyway, so Lali Combre Noir, it's a, another fragrance is similar to Fanny of Flames by Nishane, at least to my nose. Similar ballpark, similar smell. It has differences, but the boozy, sweet, like the cognac or whatever is in this is very sweet. So when you smell it, it's a sweet, very lovable by the fireplace, sitting by the fireplace, that kind of smell for the cold weathers. I really feel the price tag for this is just unfair because it's so darn affordable, you know. Uh, and Lalik makes some great fragrances. If you really want a great perfume, try Lalik Ombre Noir. Check out my review on this. 
and again this thing continues lalik after lalik <laughs> lalik lion purom okay this is lalik's purom lion version uh, i had the edt version 2016 or 17 and i sold it off i did not really enjoy the maturity about it it's a very mature perfume i feel like it's a bit dated and it's not very playful or citrusy did not enjoy the try down but in time i met bordeaux portugal and i smell bordeaux portugal more and more i feel like it's a bit too much for me but this one right here if you love bordeaux portugal if you want more affordable one zero less and you want really good performer you should definitely look at this perfume this is lalik's masterpiece i tell you lalik has some great fragrances lalik lion purum is definitely worthy in my collection definitely i'm very happy to have it back next discontinued gem lacoste essential okay i had this perfume like a smaller bottle i think from malaysia i sold it off and then i felt like you know i was not reaching for it i don't like grassy i told you green perfumes i'm not a very big fan of it back then then i started missing it you know i'm like i'm missing this you know especially if you see the color inside the green the grassiness of it it's kind of like citrusy you know like i i just love how classy these bottles are i just miss the smell this is such a good fragrance like to wear with t-shirt jeans back in the days and look at that bottle how genuinely uh, beautiful sophisticated this looks i like this gator and there's one sport version of this i am looking for it still but i can't find it so i really missed it i just get it for the memories okay miss my great days in malaysia so lacoste essential next is a fragrance this one <laughs> it's an easy choice this is very popular it's just everybody loves it if you love tuscan leather if you want a little bit more on the um, budget version from Rasasi, I would say Laiku Ampurum. This is a beast. I had about this much left and I sold it off. I was like, mm, I I had like this one, you know, I had Godolphin and I felt like, you know, I didn't need too many of Tuscan leather clone, but I used it a lot. Then one fine day I smelled this DNA, one of my brothers who wore this in very cold weathers and he like, I could tell it's not Godolphin, it's not Tuscan leather. He was wearing this. It's beautiful breeze was projecting so beastly and I like that raspberry. I had to buy this bottle back. It's a 75 mils, a pain in the ass, of course. Less juice for more money. It's like expensive, but it's so worth it. So I had to have it back. Live Guam Purum. So good. Okay. So next two, two MOR back to back. This is Sunshine Man. Definitely not the cap with this. The cap comes with this white just borrowing a cap from my interlude just to make it look nicer so this one including this one i had lyric man i had uh, beach hut man i had few more uh, epic man so i sold them off all uh, i feel epic man i'm not gonna buy it again uh, because it's very similar to many other amouages but sunshine i was missing it in the winter you know like sunshine had this uh, midnight floral theme you know they have that immortal boozy sort of vibe and super be small and moment you know like i saw some of my brothers putting it in the group in the last winter i felt like no this one the beautiful bottle i have to have it back uh, good memories with this perfume so i'm happy to have this back sunshine man one of the best from amouage next jubilation 25 <clears throat> this fragrance uh, perhaps not known as a beast mode performer but i get excellent longevity with it okay? but just that it doesn't project so much like interlude the smell wise you know if amouage made some best fragrances this is one of them top three at least for me i love interlude this one and then journeyman these are my top three you know so what's great about uh jubilation 25 is that it's the smell it's that got this beautiful something sweet you know like something like very sweet wearable very uh high class uh royalty you know other ones they smell a little bit casual in some ways they have too much leather incense this and that <clears throat> But the ingredients in this, I think there is a black currant or something. There's a honey sort of note. It's just from time to time when you put it like somewhere after evening and just put two sprigs on your neck and it's a little bit like cloudy and rainy. You just absolutely enjoy it. Okay. This is the best, one of the best creation from Amouage. So I'm happy to have you back, you know, Jubilation 25. So next is a two-way tie once again, two fragrance from the same line. Um, <clears throat> one is discount, the other one you can find. Let me show the discontinue one first. This one, funny story. I had this and I saw one day one seller was selling a full bottle of it somewhere at uh, 65 to 75 bucks. I thought like, you know, I had about this much juice. Other one is going to be in Victor Sintens. I'm going to talk about it. 
I had about this much juice left and I was like, hey, I'm going to have a full backup bottle, you know, so why have this? I sold it off in the community. Then when I bought the other bottle, I just realized I did not check that box. And what arrived to my place was the new version of Invictus <laughs> Aqua, the blue bottle. And I was like, I was heartbroken, you know, I literally almost cried. I couldn't call that bottle back, you know, and I really liked the smell of it. So one of my dear brother, uh, luckily that day, Abhipai was selling it. He was selling it like, it was about this much juice, okay? He was selling it off. I said, I want it. It was expensive, but I bought it and good memories with it. When it came out first, a lot of craze on this, super rare nowadays, but just wanted to have it back for the smell. Invictus Aqua. The other one I was talking about is Invictus Intense. I had it and I sold it off. I have, uh, I had about this much juice left, okay? This much. And I sold it off because... You know, I was getting into more complex perfumes at that time. But, you know, one of these winters, I sprayed this in one shop. I think it was Perfume Bangladesh. And I really felt when winter comes, this is a masterpiece. This has darkness. It has sweetness. It has booze. It has tobacco. It has those notes of sweetness of Invictus. And it's super potent. This is the most potent in the line with Legend. So I bought it back and definitely it's not leaving my collection anymore. Okay, Invictus Intense. So you have three left. Uh, those are some complex perfumes, dark perfumes. This is more, perhaps the whole bunch, most uh, daring one. The reason for me to buy this again is Kuchi Gilti Absolute, this perfume, is that this is discontinued now. Getting harder to find, prices are going high. And I really feel this fragrance deserves a lot of respect. You know, the opening is dead all, sort of a fail. It's like medicinal, it's very dry leather, and it's like a vetiver. And <laughs> it just makes me smile all the time. This is absolute masterpiece from Alberto Morias. Uh, great thing about this perfume, it's more and more you try it, you see niche side of things. This is borderline niche from a designer company. And I don't know why they discontinued this, perhaps not selling well. But the newer ones, this one, the Cologne, the Oud, a lot of great gems in the line, okay? Even the Femme is good. So this definitely I want, I was craving for it. I sold it to my brother and I wanted it back. Gucci Guilty, absolute rugged uh, kind of like a very scary fragrance but i love it i absolutely love the juice color and then respect it a lot okay gucci guilty absolutely next these are fragrances you need to have uh, patience with if upon initial spray you may not understand or like it i had a small bottle and i sold it off 50 ml bottle i sold it off like 2016 17 and one day i realized this kind of dna it's growing on me okay and the perfume definitely is one masterpiece definitely from Cartier. This is Cartier uh, Declaration. Uh, many people love Declaration Dun Soir because that is sweet, rose, uh, kind of like pepper, very easy to love, sandalwood. This one has complexity, you know, like when you smell this, you do not get the concept right away. I did not get it. It's a woody, spicy, orange, kind of same way that Terre d'Hermes, uh, Daniel Saikon, if you love those, this is like a more mature version of those. Okay, Jean-Claude Arena's masterpiece. So nowadays I understand it. I absolutely respect it. This is such a masculine, this is such a high class, long lasting, uh, all year round fragrance. You can try the perfume version, but I haven't smelled it, but definitely I was missing it. So I have it back. Declaration by Cartier. <clears throat> Last but not least is a perfume. Uh, I heard it's discontinued getting pricey. I don't know for what reason, but in Bangladesh, I do not see it that much. And I like the fragrance. Okay? I like this house a lot. It's not my absolute most favorite, but this is perhaps John Vervito's one of the best creations, okay? This is Dark Rebel. I use see Dark Rebel Rider a lot, but this one you will not see. This has better performance, very similar to the Rider, but doesn't have the leather. So when you smell it, this is dark. This fragrance is so niche style. Look at that bottle presentation. I mean, just absolute kudos to John Vervito's. If you have not tried this fragrance or haven't owned any of this fragrance in your collection, you should definitely get one because these caps are super heavy very very beautiful presentation and the fragrance smells awesome in winter time and you smell different than others okay so mysterious dark and uh, winter perfume dark rebel from john barbados so these are the 20 fragrances i sold off and i feel I'm very happy to have them back in my collection i will always have them and there are many fragrances i have finished but I repurchase them again because I love them a lot, okay? I'll never run out of those. Versace Ud Noir, Versace Purum, you know the usuals, Daniel's Icon. Uh, those are my favorites. So what are some of the fragrances you sold and you feel like you're missing them sort of like memory's sake or your nose got better for different reasons, okay? 
what are the fragrances you bought back okay this is an interesting idea thank you alibhai once again for your awesome concept hopefully you enjoyed the different video and i'll just call it a night good night from dhaka bangladesh and one other thing my voice was down i had three ice cream late night bye <laughs>